too. That ass. So did y'all hear about that stuff? Like with uh, with with uh Bud Light. Yeah. Did y'all hear about Target? Target, yes, Bud Light, no. Okay, so this video kind of focuses more on the Target one because it's new, but light for about the past, it's almost four weeks now that they their their um their profits have been down almost 30%. Um, at the Red Sox Stadium, there's a Bud Light. You know, they have their kiosk. No, absolutely nobody was in that line. Isha had brought it up the other day because they put Dylan Mulvaney on the can. I put it in the thumbnail. Did you see it? Um, it's a transgender woman. She, I think she got like 50 million followers or something. Rock Quantify, they said it's a $15 billion market cap loss for Bud Light. And they have not been able to recover. The Bud Light is absolutely nobody's buying it. They're buying it back from vendors. Some of the other Anheuser Busch brands, you know, they're not as closely associated. People are buying those a little bit more now, you know. So you got like the Bush stuff, um, that cheap stuff. But the Bud Light is not selling. And again, they put Dylan Mulvaney, a transgender woman, on the can, and that was the. It was almost instant, instant. And so what happened is they alienated the, the, you know, that straight male population who drinks the beer. Uh, Craig Rock was shooting up like he had a 24 pack of Bud Light. He shot it with like an AK-47 or something. Um, and then also they took the person off the can. So now the gay clubs <laughs> were like, oh, you took it off the can. Now we're not selling Bud Light anymore. So they catered to they catered. So they catered to like half their population, let's say. Right? But then they um what's the word I'm looking for? When you like uh like uh ignore or I don't know, they I can't think of the word I'm looking for. So they catered to 50%. So the other 50% is like, well, that's not for us. But the thing that's guaranteed is you're going to lose some type of money or market share when you take those type of stances. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to break down the Bud Light one. Let me share you guys what the Target stuff is all about. You see my screen? Mm-hmm. Target right now. And there's a lot of controversy going on about all of the pride stuff that's coming out with kids clothes and things like that. So we're going to go to the kids section and we're actually going to see if they're putting weird creepy uncomfy stuff on children's clothing okay this is the child section this is literally the kids section i'm next to a literal onesie that says whatever the hell that means we have glad you came out and i'm so happy that you're queer in the kids section are you kidding me I'm sorry, but pride and toddler don't belong in the same sentence. So I found an extra small swimsuit in the child section. It says light binding effect on it. And then the bottoms in the kids section, keep in mind, say tuck friendly construction. They're giving it to your kids. If that doesn't give you a reason to boycott Target, I don't know what does, but this shit's getting out of hand. They're targeting children, whether you like it or not. And it's time that people actually do something about it because if they don't, then guess what? That shit won't just be in Target. It'll be in every store ever. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hmm. Okay. So a little bit more context for this one. Uh, so Target held an emergency meeting. The meeting was like 20 minutes, right? They, in a lot of stores, they put the stuff in the back of the store because it's on the front displays um, where people are less likely to travel. Um, But, you know, Pride Month is coming up. So, you know, people start selling just like so-called Christmas. People start selling in, you know, October. Right. Um, So they had all that stuff up front in the southern stores, Georgia specifically. They took it out the store. I know it was like Georgia and Mississippi. They took it totally out. Or and at the very least, they put it in the back. Um, they had this emergency meeting about how to kind of quell some of this. Um, I want to be fair. The swimsuit was actually in an adult section, but that was like a small, and it was 
in the kids section but i'm pretty sure that swimsuit that you can tuck your penis in is for adults i'm pretty sure so i just want to i just want to be clear on that i think um but you see you see all the pride stuff so my question is and and q might say this is a bad question again but i think it's okay is the country tired of the overselling of the lgbtq lifestyle because when i hear conservatives speak because i think that's who would be against i never really hear somebody anybody say don't be gay don't be this don't be that but i do hear him saying stop putting it in front of children if that's what you want to do in your bedroom then do that i don't usually hear anybody saying they don't they against you know that community per se that's why i said is everybody just getting tired of it just being pushed and pushed hence how i phrased the question yeah i think that's a good question here if you did your thing with the last one um shit like that 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 yeah for sure it's very evident that people are tired of of it being oversold and i think that i mean i've been coming across tons of videos even people talking about like books that have certain content that's um sort of targeting kids but it has a lot of stuff about you know homosexuality and the lgbtq stuff um even stuff that's happening with the schools, the bathrooms and shit like that. Like there's just so many different stories and it sounds like a lot of parents are speaking out. A lot of different people in certain positions in society are just speaking out about it. And like I said, and even gay people speaking out about certain things or, or really feeling away about certain things. So yeah, it is, it, it is being oversold and, and people are fed up with it. Hmm. Word, 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 word. What you think, Mary? Um, I just to mention too, I think I did see something where they target was re- removing it completely everywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I'm not sure if that was earlier today or yesterday, but I feel like it it changed from making people aware to forcing it on people. Um, so it's like they, I feel like they're at a point now where they they don't want to be treated equal; they want to be treated better than a lot of people. Um, and not necessarily equal. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it, is the country tired of it? Yeah, obviously. I mean, it all boils down to the whole trans situation with, you know, these men playing these women's sports and, you know, do it, it's like a whole trickle effect of every everybody that's under that umbrella. And it's just getting exhausting. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Alex. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's very tiring. Um, there's one thing to be aware and inclusive, but I think everything is just, it's overkill. Mm-hmm. And there's just, the art of being subtle is so lost that it's hard to digest because everything is just in your face all at one time. And live your lifestyle, do what you want to do. If you want to have the bathing suits that are more suitable for however people want to dress, that's fine. But why can't you just have it in the store? But again, it is Pride Month, so I know that they're going to go all out. But I just, I think for me, it's just the in-your-face stuff all the time. Like, we have to make an exception because of this particular individual. And I feel like we, as a Black person, I feel like we care so much more about that community. You can't say anything about them, but you can say whatever you want about Black people. Like, it's just crazy to me. Like, we always have to be super sensitive. We can't say this. There's all of these trainings. There's, it's just everywhere you go it's always something else and you don't want to offend people and it's just it's just too much and i think people again like you said here i don't think people have an issue with individuals living that lifestyle but i think it's the forcing it and why the hell do you have like on a kid in elementary school and when i think of the lgbtqi lifestyle you like what you like but to me it's just like you're promoting sex too early to these kids like do whatever you do in your home. That's fine. Everybody's family looks different. But I feel like when you want to go ahead and you want to have all of the the story times, like for why? Why can't you just tell the story? Like, why does it have to be something so extra and specific? Like, why can't you just read the damn book? Mm-hmm. Yeah, word. Chief, what do you think? 
think I pretty much I'm going with the panel, man. It should is, is it, the agenda's pushed hard and heavy, and I think babies need to be babies so they can figure out what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? And the only like I'm in my head, I'm sitting here trying to justify why the fuck you would need to buy uh, you know, one of those baby garments that, you know, supports the movement. And I'm just like, you know how they have the the same sex couple who maybe adopted a kid or had the baby or whatever and they just automatically want to acclimate the baby to their lifestyle. That's the only way it kind of makes sense. But still, you're still pushing an agenda on a child that's not informed enough to make their own decisions. So, nah, fuck that. Let the babies be, hmm. let the babies be babies, yo. But if I, so is it the same as like, like my son, when he get his own room, it's going to be all like football shit. Like, is that the same thing? No, because it's not it's not a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying okay. I don't think though I don't think I mean I I get the pressures to put that on him like <laughs> I did that. My shorty's like fuck that dad. I don't even want to play sports. <laughs> she hurt my soul. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that is that is what it is, but it's not it's not a lifestyle, bro. This is like again, like think about the number of people who have who have struggled and have committed suicide and and are and are still struggling with coming out. You dig what I'm saying? Imagine, imagine how bully these little kids are being, who or, or can be, because you project that on them, rather than mm. rather than them having. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that shit is real. Kids are fucking cruel these days, bro. Yeah, like cruel. You dig what I'm saying? And I, if you got a, a shorty coming to school with that, like you could really set your shorty up for some shit. So, Chief, well, one, if my son don't play football, I know you like to adopt. He come and live with you. That's what that name. <laughs> All right, so you can take this. All right, tell you that now. Um, now what about how does it? How is it with religion? Is that similar? Um, oh, that's like that's a good twist. That's a good twist to it, but I also don't think so because at at an, at, a, at a certain point, these individuals have choice. When they're informed enough, they can make their own choices. Not in my house. It's as for me in my house, we shall serve the Lord. When you get out, <laughs> then you can go and do what you want to do. That's how it is. <laughs> That's what it is. To my to my point. Yeah. Right? When but they're informed like enough to make their own decisions, they can do that. Serving the Lord and being religious, um, you know, following a certain religion. Like that's kind of a certain thing. Like I feel like the the LGBTQI XYZ in like re- like like religion, it's all a cult. Like it <laughs> It's all just some shit that you got to follow for somebody else for some shit that was just made up out of fucking nowhere and nobody really knows what the fuck happened. But it's like, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? And it's a lifestyle. Like, these are things that detrimentally can change your life. Like, it's not like football. Like, oh, I'm trying to force my son to play football. That's not going to have a big detriment on, you know, his lifestyle. Like, or... You know, it, it may it, it's gonna cause daddy issues, of course, but you know, <laughs> as far as like struggling elsewhere other than daddy issues, like I don't think it, it's a fucking sport. Like, dad, fuck you, I don't wanna play football. Like, he's gonna get to that point. He gonna say who to what? He when he gets to that point and be like, fuck you, I don't wanna play football. <laughs> like, Honey, who's son is this? Yours. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think for your son, he's not gonna be afraid to speak his fucking mind if this is your son we're talking about. <laughs> like, yeah. I got a blood test on that nigga. He belonged to me. Go ahead, Q. Yeah, I was gonna say I, as I'm <laughs> answer the question more, and I wanted to jump in so bad to say what you're speaking to, Chief, is not so much the lifestyle, but the orientation. Because a lifestyle, like your your lifestyle could be like football, right? Like that's just what you live, sleep, eat, and breathe football. But the orientation, so when you're pushing rainbows and you're pushing, um, you know, that whole whole homosexuality agenda and or transgender agenda, because all those letters mean something, at that point, you're kind of pre-selecting your child's sexual orientation. And I think that that, that happening too young could really do some damage. Um, I'll tell you right now, my daughter will have pink everything and be encouraged to have a boyfriend. 
that's just that's, that's shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like do you that. think? <laughs> do you think that many uh, homo homosexual couples would be as offended or bothered if their child, if their children aren't homosexual, as some straight couples would be extremely bothered if kids are gay? If do you think that that works? That that standard there. Probably if they're a part, they're a heavy part of that whole LGBTQ agenda, they probably do push that onto their kids. But no, I don't think the average gay person or gay couple should should want their children to be gay. Because to your point, you understand all the struggles. It's almost like you've had so many things happen in your life and transpire. And I think that's another thing. This is why I, I could get into arguments with, with that group. People hate to admit I've had trauma. I've had other factors. That is the reason that I am this way. They like to act like they were born that way. I, I disagree with that completely. You know what I'm saying? So at that point, it is a choice. I think when the church got involved and people started arguing with these dumbass pastors and stuff, trying to defend some shit, they got into that whole conversation of, no, it's not a choice. I was born this way. No, it's a fucking choice to stand on it. And fuck you, Pastor, if you don't agree with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I think people just have to stand on some shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that's really what it be. Even people be like, oh, I never had no um, sexual trauma. Okay, Where, did you ever feel abandoned? Did you ever feel rejected? There is some underlying reason that caused you to take that detour. And now, you you know, you chose the lifestyle you live. Just live it and stand in it. But for me to, or if I say for anybody, rather, to push onto their child, I want you to go through those same struggles unnecessarily. That's just, that makes absolutely no sense. If you if you came into this world and you have that natural inc inclination that you should have, and you have no barriers stopping you from having a, a, a what I would say a normal relationship, a healthy relationship with somebody of the opposite sex, go for it. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you happen to be gay, I'm going to love you regardless, because who am I to judge when I'm living this way? But I'm never coming out of my house to be like, y'all supposed to be like this. Or the nigga's supposed to bring a girl home. The girl's supposed to bring a nigga home. Period. <laughs> shit like that. Shit like that. Shit like that. Do you that. think that like they're that. pushing yeah. the homosexual agenda or they're pushing acceptance? The agenda. That's a good one. The agenda. Right. We've accepted it a long time ago. Yeah. Right. Like in your study. Yeah. Y'all still going, y'all still adding things, y'all adding letters, y'all doing all these exclusions and exclamations and shit like that. Like it's like it just it keeps shit like that, shit like that, shit like that, shit like that. Shit like that. Your month. We already accepted it. So what do you think would to Isha's question, what do you think would they would want? And I'm not trying to make you the spokesperson cue, but I guess for everybody, what do you think would make that community feel like okay, we're on the same playing field? Because I don't know if there is Nothing. They said for, but it's just like, what more do you want? Everything. They don't want equality for real. No, it's it's because if I've listened to a lot of these people speak on certain panels, and it's like, why would you say that? What what the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like to that point I was saying earlier, hearing so many of them say, "Well, well, I was born like this." Well, did you ever try to search within yourself? And really find that out or are you just saying some shit that just sounds like something to say in response because there was a time where i defended a lot of that stuff with certain mm. people and would say things very similar to that and then it just got to the point where it's like but this is just what the fuck it is just let it be that and you're going to be judged regardless you know what i'm saying but it takes a strong person to be able to do that hmm. i clocked out when they decided they wanted unisex bathrooms <laughs> Mary, so you pull religion in the same in the same boat? Yes. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Let me think about that for a second. <laughs> Why? Because it's it's a bunch of bullshit. You know, people have their beliefs. You know, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. So I believe there's a higher power. I don't know their name, what they look like. The but it, for real, like I, it, it's so many contradictions and so much shit, and it's like again, like we grow, we grow up. Like I grew up being raised on my dad's side with a Baptist church, on my mom's side, Spanish Catholic. So it's like you're you're getting these things forced on you, where you're like, I don't want to go 
to church, but you're forced to go to these churches. You're forced to go to Sunday school. You're forced to learn things a certain way. And you're forced to have those beliefs until you get older and you start seeing things and realizing on your own, like, damn, like this motherfucker was lying the whole time. Like, like it don't add up. Like you have so many questions about so many contradictions and it's like, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? Like, if they don't allow you to be able to be like, hey, if you don't, you don't like going to church, you know, you don't have to go. Like, of course, not when you're like five, you got to go with your parents everywhere. But when you get to that age where you like, you know, teen, preteen or whatever, and you're like, you know, this is how I feel about this. You know, like I said, I got mixed up between Catholic religion and I was getting mixed up between Baptist religion. Like, I got, But I was forced in it. So what? now it's like, I don't, I don't give a fuck about it. So what is spiritual? Where does that fall? <clears throat> it fall for me, it falls under the fact that I have not done enough research about religions to choose one. So, so you, you know believe that, that there is a God? Yeah, I believe there is a God. I believe there is a higher power that controls it. I don't believe in the whatever they call it, the, the science shit. I don't, be, I don't believe in that. I believe there is somebody that created this earth. I believe there is somebody that has control. I believe in fate you know, how things happen a certain way and, you know, why they may happen. But I, I don't put a name on any of it. What God is it you talking about? You said what? What God are you talking about when you say, all right, or you don't know what God it is? That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know. God, Allah, Ula, what, I, I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't because I don't know enough. I don't study enough religion to know, but I just know that I'm not in control. But why did you call it bullshit if you didn't study it? Because it, it's I'm saying bullshit overall because it's just that shit. I don't know. And I hear other people talk about it. I hear other people contradict themselves. Like I hear other people conversation about a lot of shit to where it's like, all right. But it's just me personally. I don't know enough. Like I'm ignorant to religions in general. But again, like inside of me, in my heart, I know that I'm not controlling what the fuck going on. Hmm. Okay. I, I, I understand. Yeah. I don't know. I get, I get fearful of the spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. I just feel like elite when people say that they have zero accountability. Accountability for what? Like anything. Cause there's nothing to hold you to it. When you're saying this is bullshit and that's bullshit and this religion is fake and it's got a bunch of contradiction, you just believe in some God, but you're free to do as you will because there's there's no law, there's no order in spirituality. I feel like there, I feel like there is, like there's still that. I feel like it's it's ultimately like still the the fear of certain things, of like your fear of repercussion of you know whatever. Like I I do believe in heaven and hell. You know what I'm saying? It's just, I, I can't go into detail because I'm not knowledgeable of it. Like, I can't tell you about Sam, Matthew, Jack, John. I I don't know none of that. I don't but know. Heaven and hell would be a Christian construct. It, it, exactly. Because, I, again, I was raised in that Christian Baptist concept. And that's just something that I chose to believe in. Okay. So you do believe in the God of the Bible then? I, I guess. I, whatever the fuck. No, I'm just interested in that concept. Maybe we got to do just a different podcast on the on the spiritual things. I hear that, and I'm just like, I want to tear that shit to pieces, but I just don't be feeling I, like people it. don't understand it the way I do either. Like, I feel like when I hear other people talk about being spiritual, it comes off different of when I hear other people talk about it than what I feel. Like I said, like my me saying spiritual is my ignorance in regards to religion, and a lot of people won't admit that. A lot of people won't admit that they just don't know. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. We can chop that up for sure. Alex, read this for me. All right. Well, with the twenty dollar, what is this? A super chat, Hamp? Yeah, girl. <laughs> okay, I'm just making sure. All right. Well, with the twenty dollars, super yeah. chat says, just to play devil's advocate, aren't black people being a little hypocritical here? For example, white people often suggest critical race theory is being pushed upon their children. So, what's the difference between LGBTQ? And the critical race theory in this case. There's an, there's an, as Q stated, there's an agenda that's applicable to LGBTQ. What's the agenda for critical race theory other than cultural sensitivity? And it's history. It's historic. I think with the LGBTQ. That, also that too. Yeah. So what's, I mean, 
there's 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 a, a an underlying agenda i should say with some of the LB, lgbtq stuff and 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 with critical race theory is i would presume it to be history and again cultural sensitivity a lot of our, lot of our shit is hidden be fair to Will, he did say just to play devil's advocate. <laughs> oh, no, no, wait, I ain't Will's. It was, I think it's a great, uh, uh, you know. But I think with the LGBTQ, and maybe it's just my ignorance in it when we talk about it, I always just think about what you're doing behind closed doors sexually. Like, I always just think about that. Like, live and do what you want to do. That's fine. But why do we have to talk about what you do behind closed doors all the time? Love who you want to love, marry who you want to marry, whatever. But I think when it comes to critical race theory, that is historic fact. That is something that affects our society as a whole. Like, it's very different than who you decide to go to bed with at night. It's very different. Because hmm. mm, a lot of niggas got side niggas, too. I'm just right. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. That's, mm, 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 mm. That's crazy. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> man, oh man. Uh damn. See, they, see, Will done stirred it up because I like this conversation too. Take notes. Uh, let's, let's double let's double back on it. Let's double back on it. Yeah, because John the Baptist said in the chat, uh CRT also teaches LGBTQ. Interesting. <laughs> I'll oh, do some research man. on it in detail. Yeah. Like Moses was good. Damn. <laughs> hey, this good work today, man. Like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend. Hit that like button now if you right now if you can. That helps the channel the most. I mean, it's been an awesome conversation.